In the book of Luke, chapter 19, I'm going to read you some verses here. Starting in verse 36, this is when Jesus was entering Jerusalem. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude and the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. You know, we've all read the scripture. And of course, there's been some pretty good movies. This is a cut from Jesus of Nazareth, uh, old movie from the 70s. Uh, and we can imagine what it was like to be there as they laid down their clothes and they had the palm branches crying unto Jesus as the Messiah entered Jerusalem. It was holy. It was incredible. People were convicted and moved uh, to beyond. And the Pharisees were upset, first of all, that Jesus was getting praise. And they wanted to silence the crowds who were, in fact, worshiping Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. They wanted Jesus to tell all these people to shut up, to don't praise Jesus, to calm everybody down, to chastise them, to be silent. And Jesus, knowing full well the absolute power of conviction, power of triumph, the power of the Holy Messiah entering into Jerusalem, you, you couldn't shut these people up. If you tried, the movement was so powerful and ordained by God that I have no doubt also what Scripture says. The, the, the very rocks would have cried out. Jesus, I'm not even going to try. Not that he had to answer, but it was so absurd. But Jesus gave the best answer because this was warranted. This was indeed sanctified. And it was beautiful and wonderful. Who would ever try to silence the praises of those who follow Jesus Christ? Well, you're going to find out today. All right, so I'm looking at one of Amanda Grace's live streams that she did on February 7th. I'll move this down so you can see the date. Uh, look at this, 139,000 people have seen this video. But if you've never been to one of Amanda's uh, live streams, she can get, boy, 7, 10, 12,000 people watching live while it's happening. It's really quite astonishing. And always on the side, there's always a chat. Keeping in mind that tens of thousands of people uh, can put comments in here. And for some reason, they don't like that. The blue names with the wrenches, these are the moderators. And you can see as the chat goes and Amanda begins, uh, Amanda begins to prophesy, and I use that term loosely, You'll see the comments from the moderators uh, moderators as they come on and storm the crowds and say things like, during the words of the Lord, focus on Jesus, no chat in a chat room. Look at Steve here. He's one of the worst. Uh, he says, guys, I will put you in time out. No chat, please. I want you to keep in mind he's speaking to grown adults like they're five years old. Please listen. During the words of the Lord, focus on Jesus. Look at one after the other, right? Look at Corey down here. Respect the word from the Lord and Amanda. Oh, same level stuff here. The Lord's on the same level. No chat during his message. Your message will be removed. So here you're going to be putting time out. Your message is going to be removed. Okay, so why is this so disturbing? Well, people who are coming fellowshipping online, they want to say things like, praise the, the Lord God, praise Jesus, glory to God, I'm so happy to be here, God bless everyone, things like that. But you've got other humans saying that's forbidden. You can't do that because as the, the prophetess, by the way, who is an absolute confirmed false prophet, she's uttering her fake words, 
you're not allowed to talk. So my question becomes, why is there a, a chat at all? Why is there a chat at all? Well, I think we know why, right? In this particular live chat, Amanda made no less than $730 in 40 minutes. But there's also tactics involved because as this woman grows her channel, uh, people are beaten into submission to be obedient while they listen to these fake words which are not from God. And that is, again, a tactic that uh, she's having a great deal of success with, and the moderators love being a part of that. They're the gatekeepers. They're the henchmen. Shut up or you will be removed. No, you can't say, praise Jesus Christ, for this word is too holy to be interrupted in the chat which she has set up, which you're not allowed to chat in, except for certain times. And it's just absurd. This is absolute cult behavior, uh, treating grown people like children. And they'll say, well, Drew, these are holy words from God. Again, so why do you have a chat at all? One more thing I want you to consider is on the playback. So once this gets done, it goes on into the library. You can watch it. Has the holiness, alleged, alleged holiness of these words changed? No. So why then, when I watch this back, am I interrupted with commercials and ads? Well, because, you know, Amanda's monetized. So you might be right in the middle of this and oh, there's, a, there's an ad pop up. Got to wait for the ad to finish before you can get back to the holy word that was sent to Amanda from the Lord. Is that not an interruption of holiness? What's more important, getting the commercial? That's okay. But you got people over here that can't say, praise Jesus. Or you'll be put in time out, according to Steve. Now, a great example of hypocrisy is if I zoom up here, watch this. Old Steve-O here makes a comment in the middle of Amanda's alleged prophecy, which, by the way, she's not prophesying again. She's reading from her notes. Look at Steve says, the New Madrid fault line is waking up. Oh, <laughs> so Steve gets to chat. Steve just told you to shut up. And then he starts chatting. So it's kind of like, well, do as I say, not as I do. It's all right there in front of you people if you want to see it. Now in Matthew 19, something similar happened. If you scroll down, look at starting in verse 13. Then there were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. They didn't just like try to forbid it. They rebuked them. And then Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid hands on them and departed thence. So this was, again, just another attempt at humans trying to prevent the adoration and the praise of Jesus Christ. This happened in person. And I know a lot will say, well, yeah, but that's different. You know, we're, we're going to be quiet while the word of the Lord is delivered. Well, people want to praise Jesus. So if you want to shut people up, that's on you. And you're going to have to give an explanation, uh, both Amanda and the moderators. But for me, you can clearly see this is an absolute cult. And I would say to those that want to praise Jesus Christ, praise him always. Pray to him always. Give him glory. Don't ever let a human tell you that because another human is speaking that you need to shut up and not praise Jesus. Look at Hope here. Hope said, I'm going to use all caps. They're just not listening to me. All comments will be deleted during the word. Could you imagine you going, somebody said, praise Jesus Christ, and you deleted that. That's astonishing. Again, we can see why all these donations, 900, I'm sorry, $731 in 40 minutes. They don't take the chat down. That is astonishing. So for those of you that love Jesus Christ in truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you. And never let a human tell you not to praise the living God.